Hi guys, welcome to Never Too Much True Crime. I'm your host, Amaya, and every week I'll be making a video about, you guessed it, true crime. So if you love true crime as much as me, I might be even more obsessed with true crime than you, but that's for another day. Make sure to like and subscribe and be part of the family, and let's get into it. Today's case we'll be focusing on is Tara Calico. Tara Calico was born on February 28th. Um, 1969 in Berlin, New Mexico. It was a small town where kids can go outside and play and they didn't have to worry about any crime happening. Her parents are David Calico and her mom is Patty Dull. She also has a sister, Michelle Dull, that talks about the disappearance of her sister. Tara, growing up as a kid, she was very athletic, very active. She was into sports like cheerleading, tennis, you name it. On Tuesday, September 20th, 1988, Tara left home around maybe 9, 9.30 a.m. She would go on daily bike rides along New Mexico State Road 47. It was a very isolated area. So just nothing but just like just land, just nature. She did that every single morning. On the morning before she disappeared, she told her mom that, you know, if I don't come back by 12 to come pick me up. Tara had plans to play tennis with her boyfriend around that time also. 12.30 hits and Tara is nowhere to be found. Her mother went outside to go looking for her and she was not there. Tara's mother ends up calling the police and her boyfriend. Her sister Michelle said that she knew that something was very wrong because one, it's a very quiet town, like rarely any crime happens there. And she just had a gut feeling like, okay, something happened to my sister because she would have been home by now. She also said that Tara really kept her word. So if Tara said that she was gonna be home by this time, she was home at that time. It was very off. Michelle, Tara's boyfriend at the time, and Tara's friends went to go searching for her. It started to get really cold outside, very dark. So they've been searching for Tara for hours, literally until the sun came down and there was also a storm coming. So they had to walk back. They also drove up and down the highways to see if they could find Tara anywhere. You know, maybe she's lost somewhere in the highways and she didn't know how to get back home. They were just trying so hard to find any clues to find her and they didn't find anything. Eventually about two and a half miles south, the searchers eventually found clues that led to Tara. They saw tire tracks and bike tracks. There was a yellow Walkman there. If you don't know what that is, it kind of looks like an old MP3 player basically, but it has like a cassette tape inside of it, or I could be wrong, but I'll show you guys a picture of what it looks like, you know, because <laughs> I had to search it up. I said, what the heck is that? They found like a broken piece that indicated that, okay, this is Tara's last whereabouts. To Michelle, it seemed like Tara purposely left clues there so her sister would know or somebody close to her would know like, okay, something happened to her because she left the clue. There was also also a cassette tape that was found on Highway 47. Tara's mother confirmed that the cassette tape was her daughter's. Witnesses explained that they saw Tara on her bike and a Ford pickup truck was trailing behind her. Another witness, or I don't know if it's another witness or the same witness, but there's a witness that saw a person get out of the Ford and ended up going to the passenger side. The witness also said that he saw Tara riding her bike, but she didn't know that this vehicle was following behind her. She has her earphones in, she's not paying attention. Over the next five days of them searching, they continue searching for Tara day and night, nonstop by foot, using boats, searching the river. There was also students that helped search all day, all night, everywhere. So after the days of her disappearance and constantly searching for her whereabouts, they end up having a sketch of who they might think kidnapped Tara. Nine months passes by and there's still no clues at all. It's just nothing at this point and it sucks. Until on June 15, 1989, they find this mysterious Polaroid photo of a woman who looks like it could be Tara and a little boy. And they both have like black duct tape on their mouths and they're both tied up and it looks like they're in a van. The photo was found at a convenience store on the ground. It was a woman that came out of the store and she picked it up, she noticed it. Current affairs, they air this photo to the media Everybody goes crazy over this photo. The reason why they did it was because they were hoping to find any more clues linking to Tara. Somebody has to know something. The FBI is involved at this point. Again, the media goes crazy over this photo. The police ends up getting a lot of tips from all over the US. A lot of chaos at this time. Also, if you hear birds in the background, I apologize. Like, there's a lot of birds here. <laughs> but then they end up finding a book that has someone's phone number on it. But I think the phone number wasn't clear enough for them to see it. So they had to guess whose phone number it might be. This leads into a dead end. They never find out whose phone number it is. A woman ends up talking to Tara's mother because the boy 
in the photo, she believes that that's her son. The mothers of Mike and Tara were strangers only a week ago. Now they're brought together in a common cause, a national effort to find their missing children. Michael Henley's parents claim their son is in the picture with Tara. His name is Mike. Uh, Mike went missing on a camping trip with his father um, two months before Tara's disappearance. Around June of 1990, Mike's remains were found. His name was Michael Henley. He was found in the Zuni Mountains in New Mexico. Uh, he died of exposure. From there, the FBI analyzes the Polaroid photo that they have. The FBI says that they don't think that the woman in the photo is Tara at all. They think that it's someone else. Michelle, Tara's sister, she believes that it was her absolutely in that photo. I don't know if it's actually her. It looks like it could be her, but it looks like it could be somebody else at the same time. So what do you guys think? Do you think that that's Tara in that photo? Because me personally, I really don't know. And even if the photo is not her, then Who's in that photo? Who is that? Who is that woman and that little boy? 30 years has already passed about this case. And it really breaks my heart that Michelle hasn't found her sister yet. Like there's no closure. There's no peace for the family to find out what actually happened to her. There's barely anything. Like they don't really have too much of anything to figure out like what happened to this girl. I really hope that they find something to bring the family peace. The case still remains unsolved to this day. There's not really a lot to this case, not a lot of information, you know, just a couple of things here and there, but nothing really solid to figure out if she was kidnapped, if something bad happened to her, like who did it, who was it? Sergeant Roland is in charge of this case and he's been working nonstop and working very hard to figure out like what happened to her and to give Michelle that type of closure that she needs. The FBI is also back on the case as well. Sergeant Roland believes that there was foul play. He believes that something horrible happened to Tara during her disappearance. He truly believes that that's what happened. He believes that she was abducted or, or murdered. Michelle, Tara's sister, she has a podcast with one of Tara's old classmates. I think her name is Melinda Escabel. If I'm mispronouncing these names, always let me know. <laughs> they both believe that whatever happened to her happened like close to home. Like it wasn't just a stranger. It was somebody that Tara knew, her sister knew, her mom probably knew. Maybe it was a neighbor. Maybe it was somebody that they have met before. They've been around her somebody that she was probably familiar with. From Michelle's perspective, her theory is that there were two guys in that vehicle and they were following Tara, right? When she was riding her bike and they were like trying to like cat call her and get her attention and they accidentally hit her. That's what Michelle thinks. One thing that stood out to me was the fact that like, where's, where's her bike? I don't think they ever found her bike, right? So where's her bike? The vehicle's not there. There's just tire marks. So my theory is that I think that they were trying to kidnap her. She probably realized that she was being followed and then she turned her bike like this. She turned it the other way and then the vehicle followed her. Or when she was trying to turn the other way because she noticed that she was being followed, the car probably hit her. That's what I think. And also another theory that I have is that she was hit on purpose. I know that sounds horrible, but I think that they purposely hit her to try to get her attention or they purposely hit her so that, okay, she doesn't have a bike anymore. So they put her bike in the back of the vehicle and then the person or, or two people, whoever, they were like, oh, hey, do you need a ride? I'm sorry, I messed up your bike. And then she puts it in the back of the vehicle and then they drive off. Instead of taking Tara back home, they didn't take her back home, they did something to her. That's my theory and that's what I think. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section, like what do you think your theories or like what do you think happened to her? These birds have been chirping and chirping and chirping. All right, moving on. If you guys have any information about the case at all, I'll leave like links in the description box below for you guys. One of the links is gonna be an FBI website. All her information is there, her poster's there. If you scroll down at the end, uh, you'll see uh, submit a tip. From there, you can contact your local FBI office and there's other information on there that you can click on to um, give them any kind of information or any clues about Tara and her whereabouts or anything. My heart goes out to her family. My heart goes out to Michelle and I hope that she gets justice for her sister. I, I hope they find something. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope to see you guys next week and bye.